Welcome to Lesson 11. If you're following along in the Scratch Programming Playground book, we're still on Chapter 3, making modifications to our maze game. So in this lesson, we're going to add some deadly spike traps to our maze. Well, actually, they won't be quite deadly, but they will slow down the cat if the cat's touching them while the spikes are out. And that gives the other player more time to solve the maze. So let's go into the Scratch Editor. I'm going to start from our two-player game that we just finished in the last lesson, and let's go ahead and create a new sprite by clicking on the paintbrush button to draw our traps. So this will be a very simple drawing. I'm just going to select the black color and the line tool and zoom in a bit and just draw a little line. I'll hold down the shift key so that it's perfectly straight. Just a small line like that. You'll see it appear on the stage. Yeah, that's a pretty good size, something about that big. I'm going to put this line just below the crosshairs at the center of the canvas. And just like sprites can have their own name, costumes for the sprites can also have their own names that you set up here. I'm going to change this from costume 1 to trap off. And while I'm renaming things, let me click on the I button to open up the info panel for this sprite. Rename it from sprite 1 to trap. Now I want to create another costume that looks exactly like this one except with spikes on it. So I can go ahead and duplicate this costume by right clicking on it and selecting duplicate. And that creates this new costume trap off 2. I'm going to rename this and this will be trap on. This is when the trap is on and has the spikes sticking out. So let me draw the spikes. I'll just um, maybe pick this gray color for the spikes and select the line tool and just draw a bunch of triangles really, just really simple graphics for our spike traps. And maybe select this, the fill bucket tool to fill in these spaces right here, and maybe just pick the brush tool to finish this up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we have the trap off, and then trap on when the spikes are shooting out. So let's click on the scripts tab and start adding some code. So the first thing you'll notice is we want multiple spike traps throughout the entire uh, stage. We don't just want this one. Now what we could do is make duplicates of this sprite by right clicking and selecting duplicate. But instead, let's go ahead and use another feature of Scratch called cloning. So to start, let's go to the brown events category, grab this when green flag clicked block. And then let's go to the yellow control category and grab this block here at the bottom, create clone of myself. And this will create a clone of the sprite. It'll be a sort of like a duplicate sprite. So when I click on the green flag, you'll see, well, there's still just the one spike trap there. But if you drag this away, you'll see that, oh, they were just right on top of each other. So when the cr clone is created, it's created in the same place as the original sprite. So one of these is the clone and the other is the original sprite. And when I click on the red stop sign, Notice that the clone will delete itself, so when it, the clones only exist while the program is running. So if I want several of these spike traps, I'm going to have to just keep duplicating these blocks. Whoops, accidentally grabbed the maze there. But you can see there are six clones and one of the original sprite. So there's seven spike traps in total. Now this is a bit of a mess because if I want a different number of spike traps later I'd have to keep adding or removing these blocks. So instead let me just get rid of all these extra create clone blocks and grab this block repeat. So the repeat block is sort of like the forever block except instead of looping forever it'll only loop a certain number of times which we type in right here. So if I want to run this create clone of myself block six times. I just type six and now it will repeat itself six times. I'll just create the same number of clones as last time. Now often when we're creating clones we're just going to use the original sprite sort of as a master copy uh, that just generates all of these clones and then we'll hide the original sprite. Let's go to the purple looks category and grab this hide block and so when we click on the green flag to test this out we'll see that instead of seven spike traps, we only see six. 
And that's because we just have the six clones up here. The original, the original sprite has hidden itself, so we don't see that. So we can click on the stop sign, and all the clones go away. Notice, however, though, when we click on the green flag, we don't see any of these, sp of these spike trap clones that appear. And that's because the original sprite is still hidden from the last time we ran this program. It hid itself, and so when it creates clones the next time the program is run, those clones are also hidden. So that's not what we want. We should grab this show block and put it at the very start of the program. That way, the original sprite will show itself, then create six clones, which will also be showing themselves, and then only the original sprite will hide itself. Now the code for the clones will always be run from underneath another block, not the one green flag clicked, but instead, under here in the yellow control section, under this block, when I start as a clone. So you can think of when the green flag clicked as the code for the original sprite, and when I start as a clone as the code for the clones. And this is because since the clones are created after the green flag has been clicked, those clones didn't exist when the green flag was originally clicked, so that's why they don't run this script at all, which is a good thing because then those clones would also be showing themselves and then creating a bunch of clones and hiding themselves, and the clones they create would also be creating clones. So it's a good thing that they only run code underneath this block when I start as a clone. So the first thing we want to do is we want all these spike traps to just move around randomly around the stage. So let's go to the dark blue motion category, grab this go to XY, let's add random numbers for the X number and Y number. So in the green operators category, grab these blocks, pick random, and let's just say uh, for the X and Y position, let's have a random number between negative 170 and 170. We'll need to do that for both the X and the Y. Negative 170, 170. So when we click on the green flag, hey, that's pretty interesting. Okay, so now we can test this out multiple times. So all of these spike traps have just moved themselves randomly. All of these clones are running the exact same script, this script right here. It's just that the random numbers that they pick for themselves are going to be different from each other, which is why they end up in different places. So cloning is a really good idea whenever you have clones that will run the exact same code. And that way you don't have several sprites several duplicated sprites taking up space here in the sprite area. We couldn't use clones for the orange cat and blue cat because for one, they look different, one is orange and one is blue, but they also have slightly different code. It's not the exact same. You can see the orange cat uses the arrow keys to move around, whereas the blue cat uses the WASD keys, and there were other small changes that we had to make. So we couldn't use cloning for the orange cats or the apples, but we can use it for the traps. So now that we have the traps in position, let's have them switch between their on and off costumes. So let's go to the yellow control section, grab this forever block, and here in looks, we will want to grab this switch costume to block. And at first we'll just have it switch to the off costume, and then also later then switch to the trap on costume. Except Remember, the computer is going to be running these code blocks really fast, so this will constantly be switching on and off the traps. Let's add a small delay by going to the yellow control category, grabbing this wait one second block here, and a wait one second block here. So we can click on the green flag. Oh, okay. I mean, that's kind of nice. They're all sort of like blinking lights on, and then off, and then on, and then off. That's sort of predictable though. We could add some variation by instead of having one second for a wait, we could have a random number of seconds for the wait. So let's go back to the green operators category and grab a pick random block for each of these. So now they're gonna be waiting for a random number of seconds. Let's see, we'll have it switch to the tra uh, trap off costume. It'll be off for, let's say five to eight seconds. In fact, let's do something else instead of 5 to 8 seconds, because if we have 5 to 8, Scratch will pick a random number either 5, 6, 7, or 8. The random number it picks will be a whole number, but if we type 5.0 to 8.0, it'll pick a random number that also has a decimal point, 
it could pick maybe 5.0 or 5.1 or 6.7 or 7.2 and that gives us much more variation in the random number that it picks instead of just 5, 6, 7, or 8. And here let's also change this to be 1.0, so anywhere between 1 and 4 seconds. Let's click on the green flag. And there's that five second wait, which is good. Just oh, and then you can see the spike traps are turning themselves on and off randomly. Although, if you notice, nothing happens when the cat is touching the spike trap. This is just like how, when we first added that movement code, the cat could walk through the walls of the maze. And that's because we haven't programmed it to do anything when the cats are touching the spike traps. So, let's click on the red stop sign and add a bit more code. Let's go to the orange cat. We'll start with the orange cat first. And here in this script, the one with all the uh, movement code added to it, let's add a new if block. We want to check if the cat is touching the spikes. So let's add this if then block here. And let's go to the light blue sensing category. We could add the touching block and just set this to touching trap. And then when the cat is touching the trap, we could have maybe the cat says meow, so let's go to the pink sound category, add that play sound meow, which if you click on the sounds tab, you can play right here just to hear what it'll sound like. And then maybe also add this say hello for two seconds block. But instead of saying hello, we'll have the cat say ouch. And so the cat will say ouch for two seconds. Now, sort of like the wait two seconds block, the execution will pause on this block while the cat is saying ouch. So this will add a two second delay because while the execution is stuck here for those two seconds, it won't be running through this forever loop and then moving the cat if the arrow keys are, pu are pushed. So even if the player has the arrow keys pressed down, since the execution is stuck here for two seconds, in those two seconds, it won't be running through the forever loop and checking if the arrow keys are pressed. So this will add that delay. Now we could have this if touching trap, but this wouldn't be quite right because this counts when the cat is touching the trap, even when the spikes aren't out. Remember, we had the two costumes trap on and trap off, and we really only want the cat to be slowed down when the cat is touching the trap and it's in the trap on costume. So what we could do is replace this touching trap block Go back to the light sensing category, we'll replace it with this block, touching color. And we can set this color by clicking on this color block and clicking on the color of the spikes. Now if the spikes aren't being shown like they are right here, that's because we need to set the current costume to the one that has the spikes showing trap on. So click on that sprite then click on the costumes tab and select trap on. You'll notice now the spikes are going to be shown here. Then we can go back to the orange cat, back to the scripts tab. And now to set this color, so if it's touching this color, we don't want this green color. Instead, click on that color box. And then you can see as you move the mouse pointer around, it's changing the color in this box to whatever the mouse is over. So when the mouse is over this gray area, that color box is gray. So let's hover the mouse over the dark gray of the spikes and then click once. And that'll set the color here to this dark gray color of the spikes. So let's test this out. I'm going to click on the green flag and move the orange cat around. Nothing happens when the cat's touching the trap until the cat is touching the gray color of the spikes. And the gray color of the spikes only appear when the spikes have shot out. Now we just need to add this same code to the blue cat. Now we could just do all of the work of dragging all of those blocks here, but instead there's a shortcut. You can duplicate the, the code blocks in one sprite to another sprite by just dragging that code over to the sprite in the sprite area. Make sure that the mouse pointer is over the box for that sprite. Then when you let go of the mouse, the code will snap back into place. But now here in the blue cat, we'll see a duplicate copy of that code has been made. And then we can just add it down to the bottom right here. So we can quickly test this out, make sure that the blue cat gets slowed down 
whenever the blue cat is touching the gray spikes. Perfect. And that finishes the deadly spikes, or at least the annoying slowing you down spikes for the maze game. The next lesson will have the last change that we'll make to our maze game. We're going to go ahead and add some cheat codes that allow the players to walk through walls. So in this lesson, we learned how to create different costumes for a sprite, just by painting new costumes, uh, or duplicating the costumes that we've already drawn. We've also learned about cloning, which is a way that we can have multiple sprites appear if they have the exact same code as each other. And that way we don't have to have duplicate sprites filling up the sprite area down here. We also learned about the repeat block, which is kind of like the forever block, except it only loops a certain number of times instead of looping forever. We also learned about show and hide, which will show and hide the sprite or the clone on the stage, and when it's hidden, it won't be able to interact with anything that's on the stage. We also learned of this little trick with the pick random block, where if you enter a number with a decimal point, it will come up with a random number that also has a decimal point, so this one will come up with 5.2, say, or 6.8, instead of just 5, 6, 7, and 8, the whole numbers. And we also learned the trick about duplicating code from one sprite to another by dragging this code over that sprite in the sprite area.